I would like to talk about tax burden or tax incidents. These are actually the same concept. I prefer the word burden, but it doesn't matter what you use. For economists, there's going to be two different types of burden. One is the statutory tax burden, and that is the person who writes the check to the government. And that's going to be different from the economic tax burden because the economic tax burden is the person or the group, the, the entity, which could be a firm or whatever. Uh, the economic tax burden is the group whose utility is made worse off by the tax. And this is an important distinction to keep track of because a lot of times the government wants you to believe that the burden is on whoever they're placing the tax on. Like if you're going to tax uh, rich people who use yachts, they want you to think that burden is on those rich people even if the person whose utility is made worse off by a yacht tax is actually the blue collar workers who, uh, who, who produce yachts. So that's the classic example is the yacht example where um, the government places a tax on someone and they're, they're trying to get you to believe that that person who writes the check to the government is bearing the burden of that tax. Whereas economists are like, no, 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 sometimes this person who actually is writing that check can pass that tax along to somebody else who has less negotiation power at the negotiation table between these two parties. And if you need a quick and dirty rule for figuring out who bears the economic burden of a tax, it's going to be the person or group with the more inelastic supply or inelastic demand. In other words, the person whose behavior is hardest to change in response to that tax. And there's a way of thinking of this in your head without actually drawing out the supply and demand curves, although I will link below to a video that does look at those curves. But let's go through a few examples. So the cigarette tax, um, we might imagine smokers and cigarette companies sitting down to a negotiation table and being like, which one of us is going to bear more of this burden? Like either um, the producers are going to have to take a cut out of their monthly paycheck or else the, um, the smokers are going to have to pay a higher price for their cigarettes. And to figure that out, both of those parties are trying to figure out what kind of threat they can make to try to make the other party take on that burden. And the, the smokers can actually go into that room for the cigarette tax and they can say, if you don't bear this burden, then we're gonna stop smoking and we're not gonna buy your product anymore. And of course, the cigarette companies know that that is an empty threat because they know the smokers are addicted. Whereas the cigarette companies can say, actually, we're just going to devote our fields that are now producing tobacco and our factories that are now producing cigarettes. We're just going to switch those to producing cotton instead if you don't bear the burden. And is that a credible threat? Like, is it fairly easy for them to just grow different crops on their fields and switch the factory to something else? And the answer is yeah, it actually is kind of easy for them to just change up the way they're producing and what they're producing to something that's also pretty profitable. So that is a credible threat. Therefore, because the, the smoker's threat is less credible than the uh, than the cigarette company's threat, you've got this situation where the smokers will bear the burden of that tax. Now, my second example is kind of a goofy one that would probably never happen in the real world, but I think it illustrates the point, which is that um, if you had a tax on tourist art, who would bear the burden of that tax? Would it be the tourist who goes into these shops and perhaps buys some art while they're in that particular destination? Or would it be the artist who creates this wonderful artwork that they own and they own the little shop that sells that art? Which of those would bear the burden in that case? So once again, we imagine this negotiation table where the artists and the tourists are sitting down to try to get the other party to bear that tax. 
tax. And the tourists, they're going to threaten, actually, if you don't bear the tax for us, we're just not going to buy art from you. We'll instead spend our tourist money on more tours. We'll just buy the art from eBay when we get home. Um, they have all these threats to try to convince the artists, actually, uh, we're not going to buy that. And actually, that sounds like a pretty credible threat. You can get art from lots of places. Um, there's lots of other ways of spending your money on vacation, so I would actually buy that as a credible threat. Whereas the artists, what are they going to threaten? If you don't bear the burden of this tax, we're going to go out of business and move to the city, or go out of business and not make art anymore, or try to sell our art on eBay, which is going to get them a lot less money than in the little tourist shop. Well, actually, I think the artists are the ones at the disadvantage here. It's the artists who, um, they have their little place where they sell their personal art. It's hard enough for them to sell, so um, there's not really an alternative for them, so the artist is probably going to bear the burden in this case. Now, with the yacht tax, even though this is a classic example, it actually involves two different markets. First, there's the market for the people who buy the yachts, the rich people, and the producers who sell the yachts. So you have to figure out between those two groups which one is which one can change their behavior most easily without losing that much utility? And then the second market with the yachts is the companies that build the yachts and the workers, the blue collar workers who are hired to make the yachts. So if we're thinking about the yacht situation, the rich people can actually have their parties elsewhere. They can have their parties in fancy hotels and in national parks. And there's so many different places that you can have a great party if you have a lot of money. So the rich people's utility is not reduced that much. Now, what about the, the company, the yacht company? Can they put that factory at work in some other way that's also lucrative? And the answer is somewhere in between. Like, it might be kind of difficult to take all of the capital that that yacht company is devoting to um, making boats and change it into a different type of factory. But it could be done. There's markets where you can go to figure out what would this factory be used for if I didn't use it for the current thing. Um, so in that case, the rich people's utility is not changed that much by the tax. The yacht company may have to bear some of that burden. And then we have to start looking at the market between the workers, the blue collar workers who make those boats and the company. And the fact is that the company can sell the capital. It, they can sell the factory line. They can sell the building where this is uh, taking place. Those blue collar workers, especially if they have expertise, it's kind of difficult for them to find another job, particularly if that company is located in a town where that's the main employer. So it could be that this tax that's supposed to be a tax on rich people ends up um, really harming the blue collar workers who don't have another place where they can still stay with their family in that town and still work. They may be deeply harmed, whereas the rich people can just change what they're doing a little bit. So that's the general idea with economic tax burden.